God, it is our only desire that we have you in our hearts this day. Father God, we thank you for this Father that you've brought us and for the opportunity that you've given us that we may listen from you. We pray, God, that you speak to our hearts and you speak to us in a manner that we will understand. We thank you and we honor you, for it's in Jesus' name we believe and pray. Good morning, church. Praise God. Tuko salama. Is your neighbor looking okay? We thank God for your neighbor, even as we thank God for you. As you have seen and heard, my name is still Roy Okonji. I'm born again this morning. I love Christ as my Lord and Savior. And as I keep saying, I haven't gotten reason to renounce that stand. And I want to believe that that is still your position this morning. My beautiful wife is with us this morning. I think she can just wave to us. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful to the Almighty God for the opportunity to be alive and to stand here today. And I want to, in a special way, thank the Archdeacon for allowing me to use his pulpit this day. I do not take it for granted. And we also thank God for that. For sure, I'm not even sure that I am standing here. I am still wondering whether it's me or someone else. I do not even know how I'm feeling. Don't ask me if the feeling is good or bad. It is beyond good or bad. But it's a feeling. And it's an interesting feeling. You know, today I'm able to see all of us. I'm able to see the people seated where I used to sit many years ago. This is what you people see every day. <laughs> My goodness. I am tempted to envy you. Praise God. I think I love this view because I'm able just to see how handsome and beautiful God's people are looking. You know, when we are seated where we sit, we only see our neighbors. But we are glad that we are here. Let's go straight to today's message. And as you can see in your bulletins, it is titled, God's Favor in Obedience. God's Favor in Obedience. We will make reference to the readings that we had today, all of them, at some point in the course of my presentation. But I'm sure that the concept of favor is not new to us. It is a concept that I love so much because of the way it applies to my life and the way it has applied to the lives of so many other people that I know. You know, while reading through the various definitions of the word favor, I realize that all of them are trying to say that favor is something that is done or granted to someone out of goodwill, not because of justice or not because of remuneration. In other words, favor is given to you not because you necessarily deserve it. Favor is not a payment. Favor is not a kickback. Favor is not a bribe. Favor is not a reward. Favor is not dependent on your qualifications. Favor is not your right. And therefore you cannot wake up and begin to tell someone that you are favoring so and so and not me. I think it's my turn that you also favor me. Now there is favor the way we know it as human beings. And then there is God's favor. God's favor is something else. God's favor is extraordinary. 
God's favor is big. When God gives you his favor, it cannot go unnoticed. You know, God's favor is his unusual liking to us, positioning us to be his choice. I read from a theologian, Erickson Millard, who defines God's favor as the tangible evidence that a person has been approved by God. When God gives you favor, you will definitely stand out. We have no choice but to notice that you have been favored of the Lord. In our world today, when you favor someone as a human being, you will find yourself wanting to be close to those people every time. You will find yourself wanting to give those people opportunities when they arise. I don't know whether you have worked in an environment where someone has gotten favor of the boss. And the boss wants to highlight these people every now and then until we start whispering. Sometimes even the favored person does not understand why the boss is favoring them. But every opportunity that shows up, the boss will almost automatically be suggesting that that opportunity be taken by the people they favor. The truth about favor, even as though we start murmuring and, and whispering and beginning to suspect that there has to be something extra between the boss and the favored person, it is even worse when the two are of opposite sex. The truth is, in this world, people tend to favor those who also favor them in one way or the other. Similarly, God shows favor to those people who delight in him, those people who connect with him, and those people who honor him. And we shall be trying to show how God begins to choose the people he favors. But let's look at the way God's favor manifests to us. You know, God's favor manifests as extraordinary blessings. It manifests as anointing and protection. When you are favored of the Lord, you will be protected in a manner that we may not understand. You will give us a testimony of how God saved you from a situation that no human being can understand. But when you are favored by God, you also become courageous and confident. Even in those organizations, the people who know that their bosses favor them, the way they walk around the office is different from the rest of us, isn't it? Because they know that some power up there is covering them. And the word of God is awash with examples of people who experienced his favor, and we cannot even have adequate time to enumerate all of them. But when God favors you, the rest of us have no choice but to also show you some earthly favor. You know, when God favors you, we cannot afford to harm you even if we wanted to, because you are protected by some serious power. When God gives you favor, many of us are left asking questions. We are left wondering, how come? But she is not educated. But he is not qualified. Perhaps he is not married. How come that he's been chosen to do this thing? It is because when God favors you, the rest of us do not understand why we behave around you the way we do. In the text that was read to us in the New Testament, that was John 7, 14 to 36, we see the manifestation of God's favor upon his son Jesus Christ. You know, the book of Luke, chapter number 2, verse 52, has always reminded us that Jesus Christ grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and human beings. And therefore, we are not doubting that Jesus was favored by God. But in the text that was read to us, we saw Jesus teaching at the Festival of Shelters. Perhaps one thing that we must recall 
is that before Jesus went to this festival, if you read chapter 7 from the beginning, you begin to see Jesus not wanting to attend this festival because the Jewish leaders had threatened to kill him. And therefore there was some element of fear. You will see Jesus speaking to his brothers. They are urging him to go to the festival, but he is telling them that he is not going to the festival because those people have promised to kill him. But later on, we begin to see in verse 10, Jesus opting to attend the same festival that he was in a way afraid to attend. But he chooses to attend the festival secretly. I am persuaded to believe that despite the existing threats from the Jewish authorities, Jesus must have remembered that he was favored by the Almighty God. He must have remembered that when you are favored by God, no one can touch you unless God has allowed it. And so he decides to go. He gains the courage to attend that festival. And not just to attend the festival, but to even go to the temple and begin to teach. That is what happens when God gives you favor. I want us to take note of verse 15 of that text. The Jewish authorities were greatly surprised and they said, how does this man know so much when he has never been trained? Those are the questions your neighbors will be left asking when God gives you favor. Those are the questions the rest of us will be left asking. How comes that he or she has been chosen to do this, yet he or she has not been trained? Yet he or she does not qualify. God's favor does not obey human qualifications. God's favor is something else. If you look at verse 25 of the same text, some of the people of Jerusalem said, isn't this man, isn't this the same man the authorities are trying to kill? Look, he is talking in public and they say nothing against him. Can it be that they really know that this man is the Messiah? We will all be left wondering, how come it is you who has been chosen to accomplish that particular task? If you go to the Old Testament... It was read to us from the book of Ezra. We begin to see Emperor Cyrus of Persia speaking the words of God to give instructions to the people who had been taken into exile in Babylon to return and build God a temple. This came after the fall of Jerusalem. And these guys had been away for about 70 years. And a time had come that God wanted them to go back and build the temple. Of course, many of them, if you've been in a, a war situation and you are told to go back, you will have a lot of fear. But we see the manifestation of God's favor upon these people who chose to go back. And we are told in verse number 6 that all their neighbors helped them by giving them many things, silver utensils, gold supplies, pack animals and valuables and offerings for the temple. When God gives you favor, your neighbors have no choice but to also show you earthly favor. They will support you even without understanding why they are supporting you. These days I hear you say, Nakupenda bure. Meaning that you love someone, but you can't explain why you love them. And that is what happens when God shows people favor. Now, we have all experienced God's favor in different ways. And the reason why I love this subject so much is because I've experienced it in so many ways until I have made it part of my daily prayers, especially in the nature of my job. In the nature of my job, sometimes... I face situations that would be intimidating. Sometimes you get called upon to say something to a crowd that in human judgment is a crowd that you would say 
you are not qualified to address. Maybe I need to give you a few examples. Some years back, before I stood to speak to some regional managers of another organization on the subject of parenting, there was a senior manager who stood and asked me, are you married? I said, yes. Do you have children? And I said, yes. Do you realize that some of us are the age mates of your mother? And I said, yes. And she asked me with some attitude, ladies, you know what I mean. And she asked me, what gives you the audacity to think that you can come and speak to us about parenting when we are the age of your mother? Can you imagine you are about to say something? It's like before I stepped here, Mchungaji standing, picking the microphone and beginning to ask me, Roy, have you been ordained? Of course I haven't. And you can imagine a string of similar questions. I think I would come here and I fail to have anything to say, isn't it? But God came through and the storm was calmed. But from that day I learned the prayer of favor. That before I step before any crowd, I always tell God, give me favor. Three years down the line after that experience, I was invited by the overall director of that organization to speak to some senior managers, and the director didn't tell me who the senior managers were. And so she just told me it's a boardroom meeting of about 12 people. And when I stepped in the boardroom, the first person my eyes met was the same lady who three years ago <laughs> asked me those difficult questions. But now what was humbling is not seeing the lady there. Is that when I began to speak, I only saw God because she was writing almost everything I was saying. <laughs> and I was speaking and just telling God, thank you. Thank you for this because... Were it for human standards, definitely I would have nothing to say before this gathering. Another day, I was invited to speak to some men, and the person who invited me did not give me a full brief of who these men were. And so when I entered the meeting room, I found men in a large boardroom, and there were about 28 of them. And before I was ushered to start, the MC took it upon himself to start defining who the men in the room were. And all of them were the men of titles. And he started, the man seated to your left is Dr. So-and-so. He heads this organization and blah, blah, blah. The second man is engineer so-and-so. And the MC went on and went on, and I had all the doctors and the professors and the engineers and everyone. You know, as he was introducing the next person, I was saying, I, I hope the next one is, is, is a commoner. <laughs> and, and the list went on until the person sitting to my right. And I was welcomed on stage. That time I had learned the prayer of favor. And it's a prayer that I say every day, even before I came here, I told God, just do that thing. Give me that favor. It is only him who calms such crowds because it cannot be easy. Another time, I was invited to a member's club. And you know, our imagination is that everyone who is a member in a social club is someone who has arrived, isn't it? The other day I saw some advert in the newspaper of a certain club saying that they have a discount for those who want to join and the joining fee had been reduced from half a million to 370,000. <laughs> so I'm invited to speak to members of a club and the subject I'm given is, is a subject that does not seem to agree with the people in the audience. I'm invited to speak about personal debt management. And so I prepare, and a couple of days before the day, the chairman of the club, who I won't mention, is a, a prominent Kenyan, 
calls me and in, in his tone I sense some intimidation. And he tells me, I'm calling to give you a profile of the people that you will meet when you come. My members are accomplished members of society. My members are people who have seen everything in life. You will meet an audience of both locals and foreigners. And as you prepare, I thought you should have that in mind. It's also important to know that we have invited you as our keynote speaker. But we will have two speakers. The speaker who will speak before you is an accomplished international trainer of public speakers. <laughs> and he went on and he finished. And I went to that meeting. You know that can easily scare you. And before the meeting I said my uh, prayer of favor. The meeting was supposed to run from 7 to 8. By the favor of God, that meeting ended at 10 p.m. Because it became one of the most interesting meetings I've had in the recent past. With all humility, God's favor has taken me to places I would never have gone um, in my ordinary life. It has helped me to meet people I would never have met, to shake hands I wouldn't have shaken. My standing here today is a manifestation of God's favor. The truth of the matter is that I'm not qualified by any standard to be standing in this pulpit. It has taken God's favor. Praise God. When God gives you favor, bureaucracies will be broken to accommodate you. When God gives you favor, closed doors will slam open to allow you in. And they will happen in a manner that none of us will be able to explain. But the big question is this. Why does God give people favor? God gives you favor so that you can be a blessing to others. God does not give you favor so that you utilize it yourself for your own gain. God gives you favor so that you can set forth his kingdom here. God gives you favor so that he may be glorified through you. If you read the same text in John chapter 7, verse number 18 is saying that a person who speaks on his own authority is trying to gain glory for himself. But he who wants glory for the one who has sent him, he is honest and there is nothing false in him. In other words, we are being reminded that after this favor has been given to you, it is not for your own consumption. It is to the glory of God. It will be unfair for me to leave the pulpit before I say something about how to attract God's favor. If you look through all the people who have been favored by God, you will begin to sense that there is a particular pattern, that God is not doing it so randomly. You will begin to realize that God is not playing picky picky ponky for him to pick the person to favor next. He is careful in his selection. If you look all through from the times of Noah to the times of Esther to the times of Ruth to the times of David to the times of Daniel and every other person that you can see who the Bible says they found favor in the eyes of God, there will be a pattern. But let me ask, if God was looking for someone to favor in this congregation of St. Gertrude, would that person be you? By the way, God is looking this very minute in this congregation to find someone to be favored. Would you want that person to be you? And just in case you're thinking that I'm manufacturing that statement, if you look at the book of Second Chronicles, Chapter number 16 and verse number 9, A. It says that the Lord keeps close watch over the whole world to give strength to those whose hearts are loyal to him. Some versions say that God's eyes are roaming throughout the world looking for someone to be given favor. So I didn't manufacture that. He is indeed here today looking for you 
to be favored. The secret lies in that verse. Those people whose hearts are loyal to God. God is looking for a breed of obedient people to give favor. And Matthew 6.33 reminds us that we should seek ye first the kingdom of God. And the rest of all those other things will be added to us. We all know that David was favored. He received an anointing that is not similar to any other anointing that we have seen. And many of us would begin to ask, why would David be so favored in that manner? The book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 22, explains why David was favored. And it says, after removing him, God made David their king. This is what God said about David. I have found that David, the son of Jesse, is the kind of man I like. A man who will do all I want him to do. That is a man who is obedient. A man who will do all God wants him to do. There lies the secret as to why David was chosen. If you read the book of Genesis, verse 6, 9 and 10, you get an explanation as to why God chose Noah during that time. And the Bible begins by saying, that during the days of Noah, everyone had gone against the teachings of God. But this is what it says about Noah. That Noah was a good man. He had no fault. And he was the only good man of his time. He lived in fellowship with God. Noah was an obedient man. The psalm that was read, uh, read to us today, 128... Verse 1 begins by saying, Happy are those who obey the Lord, those who live by his commands. These are obedient people. And that is why today's text is titled, God's Favor in Obedience. Brothers and sisters, a time has come that you and I should revisit the words of the book of Lamentations, Chapter number 3 and verse 40. For some strange reason, this was my first memory verse to know before I knew John 3.16 when I was still a small boy. I was so amazed the other day when the Lord revealed to me to share this. It's a verse, of course you would want to ask me why lamentations of all the, the verses that children would know. It's not because I was lamenting. <laughs> my rural church had two banners uh, like that one. And one of them was Lamentations 340 and next to it was John 316. But the words of John 316 looked so lengthy for a small boy and Lamentation 340 is just a line. And so every time I would enter church as small children would do, I would always find myself just reading Lamentations 340 and that's how it came to stick with me. So a time has come that we may need to revisit those words. And it says that we need to examine and test our ways and return to the Lord. A time has come that you and I need to reposition ourselves and begin to attract God's favor. A time has come that we need to realize that we have to become obedient so that then we put ourselves in the path of God's eyes so that as they roam to look for who to favor, they will catch us. We should learn to position ourselves for God's favor. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.